Um, so let's start. I think let's let's go with introductions and uh, we can talk about how we want to, you know, take this group forward, how you want to read the, you know, this this whole book. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, preferences, you can discuss uh, what makes sense to uh, all of us to get the best out of, you know, our group discussions. Um, so uh, let's start with you, uh, Esmeralda. Right. Um, yeah, my name is Esmeralda, or if it's difficult, you can call me Esme. And I am a PhD student in the UK. And I work with vegetation reconstruction, of, I mean, from the past. Uh, what else also with climate reconstruction from the past to compare with the sim model simulations. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think I have taken previously, I have been in previous cohorts for, in one is like what is R4 data analysis. R4, yes, okay. And yeah. that time we divided the chapters, like each one take a chapter for uh, for each for each week. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know, I guess we're going to do the same. I don't know what yeah. do you think. Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we can uh, we can absolutely uh, do it that way or uh, depend. So my initial thought was, I mean, generally, this is how we run like each week we do each chapter, but then if one is long enough, and if there are exercises that, you know, we as a group want to focus on, it can go longer. However, in this case, um, I had, I was open to the discussion that do we want to continue doing one chapter at a time, or maybe take more than one because this is uh, sort of introduction to stats class. And it has like two chapters I know in the beginning are on just introduction of R. So that would be my uh, thought of covering it like faster was depending if the whole group has, you know, sort of uh, has that intro level, beginner level knowledge of R, you know, like, for example, if you're a PhD student, if you, like, assuming you've been working in R for a little bit, uh, you don't need to learn, you know, do a lot of installation uh, over again, all over again. So, I mean, we could go through the chapter, but maybe um, that introduction to our section, which has two chapters, we could um, like, you know, maybe just um, go over all the important uh, parts of that section, maybe in one meeting, if that's possible. Uh, no, no rush, no need to, you know, force things. But if uh, that, that was my point of view, but, you know, again, this is, this is like a voluntary group. We all decide on how we want to take things. If anything seems faster, we can go slow. Uh, whenever there are, you know, festivals and all, we, we take break and, and that, during that week. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So if there are exercises, uh, we could choose to do it, you know, in the session or we do it on, you know, we do the chapter or then we do the exercise on our own and then we come back and discuss it. So, you know, again, we can, we can do those things as well. Um, and uh, uh, again, so to do my introduction, uh, I am Priyanka. I am generally based in uh, Boston, Massachusetts, but right now I'm in India, uh, so in IST time zone. Um, and I've been working as a data analyst, data scientist, all kinds of data roles, uh, you know, with different titles uh, for a long time now. Um, I enjoy working with R. I do a lot of, um, I think I've done a lot of data science, but past few years has been more uh, creating data products for different uh, kind of, you know, clients, uh, which includes some reporting or, you know, creating shiny apps and whatnot. Um, and, uh, so I think for me, the motivation to join this club was because it, I, I feel like I think there is this, although I think I did my, I probably did my first stats course in um, back in my MBA, which was yeah, ages ago. Um, but there are, there've been, you know, previous roles where I actually did some data science and I felt like, oh, I'm not very confident of, you know, this statistical concept, like even T-test, I'm like, am I doing it right? So, you know, just to sort of build confidence and being able to ask those stupid questions as to, um, you know, why this and why not that? Or even like, why, I remember there was one time I asked my colleague, when, when my boss asked me, why don't you normalize this? And I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> I've never done that. So it's like I asked my colleague, and but he went, Oh, you don't know what normalization is? And I was like, Yes, I don't. <laughs> it was embarrassing, just his, you know, reaction. Um, 
So I hope not to face that again. And, you know, that's that's a big motivation. I'm like, these simple things, I, I theoretically know, you know, what normalization means. But, you know, what does it mean in that context of the data that I was working with? Like, how does it help? And, you know, like standardization and normalization, what I read or what I understand is the same thing, right? So I know what is standardization, divide everything by total. But I don't know, just didn't feel confident enough in, in that context and how to do it. So, you know, that shame is where I'm coming from. I'm like, okay, if there's a group of people trying to read that. So uh, the comfort is that, you know, like no, we're not going to do any, uh, it's, it's not a very fancy, very heavy book. So it's good, it's just good to have that strong base. And that's where I am. Um, Padrika, you want to introduce yourself? Though I know you, but uh, Esma. Uh, hi, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how you hear me. Can, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Sorry about the background noise. Uh, my name is Federica. I'm from Italy. Uh, I did uh, multiple blue clubs uh, here at the Air Force Data Science uh, Online Community Learning. And so I enjoy um, improving my knowledge. And uh, I'm interested in uh, applying statistics for um, different type of modeling. Uh, so I, I've seen this book uh, that Priyanka um, highlighted, and it looks interesting. So I'm just, uh, you know, cruising around. Thank you very much. Sure. Uh, yeah. I have one question. Sorry, you said um, something about your background. You said, did you say um, climate reconstruction is what you're working on? Yeah, yeah. Well, originally I am biologist. I uh -huh. am working, now I am working on vegetation and climate reconstructions to like validate or evaluate the climate simulations. So yeah, okay. as, as you as you say, like in the college, I learned like all these statistics tools, but with very like initially just manually like making like yeah, the yeah. with the calculator um, by hand with small data sets, but when yeah. these like large databases come was like, right. oh my God. Yeah, and it, I'm sure that you must have read the same typical book um, that it's a foreign author, Sweeney something. So there are two very standard books that we used to get in our college and those were like big thick books of stats uh, for reference. Um, so I think one of them was called R, R. Sweeney or S. Sweeney, but uh, a similar one like that. Uh, uh, but yeah anyway so I, and the reason why i asked you again is uh, i i would i was thinking i will say that in my introduction because climate like space is something that i am personally you know trying to orient myself into from you know business world of data analysis um so i and i have recently started like pull, pulling people into one climate subgroup that we are, have on um, within our ds Slack group. So I will send you an invite there. And uh, we, I mean, you know, I am so excited to hear that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll, we'll be really yeah, I would love to hear about your work, you know, what you do in more detail. It's it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, and okay. also I, I want to say like, uh, it's good to have like Federica here. As I have seen a lot, several videos where, where uh, you are in. And I think, I mean, they are very well explained. <laughs> so so I, I am happy you, Federica, are here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, so now that we don't have a lot many people, um, should we uh, maybe start with? So I, um, I think we all have that link of the book, right? So uh, did you read through chapter one or do you want to? Federica says yes to your <laughs> uh, point. So. Um, do we want to go through chapter one in that order or, uh, I mean, I didn't read the psychology of stats per se, you know, in that first section, the first two chapters, but I, if we want to, I can cover the introduction to our section uh, pretty quickly. Uh, but again, depending on how you two would prefer. Have you read the chapter one? Not okay. really. Okay, so Federica, um, should I cover the installation, uh, like the intro, intro to our piece for now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, please. Okay, sure. So one second. 
I will start. So I again, I'm going to just open up the book and discuss. All right. So like I said, this is not really the first chapter, but it's easy for me to talk about this. Um, so I'm going to take this as the first one because I didn't really want this to be like a very time consuming thing. So I'm going to try and uh, cover this and hopefully next one also. So that uh, as you and uh, you have worked with uh, our um, Esmerella. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I think it's it's not going to be something very foreign. So I think it's something that we can uh, hopefully quickly cover and also not have other people miss out on uh, too much um, from logistics perspective. Um, right. So this, um, this section is mainly about getting introduction to R and it has two chapters. This one being getting started with R, which essentially um, contains information about you know, why we want to use our, how, you know, it's an open source uh, tool that provides us, it can act as a simple calculator as well as, you know, you could write scripts and um, achieve uh, sort of automation in a way. Um, it was, R was designed, R as a software was designed for statistic, statisticians. So for doing statistics in mind, uh, when X, Microsoft Excel was, you know, just, just becoming too tedious or, you know, data was becoming too big for Excel to handle. Um, and, you know, it's an open source tool, so you can, once you learn this, you can avoid using any proprietary softwares, you don't have to pay anything to anyone, and things like that. Um, and so, yeah, so for, for people who are, you know, new to R, or who are basically just interested in doing some stats, they can use R, um, uh, you know, just the base R system to uh, be able to fit, you know do those statistical tasks um <clears throat> however you know with time as our, our and our community has grown we now have different ides as well that we can uh, that allow us to make it uh, you know use it more efficiently <clears throat> so now you know that theoretically we understand uh, what r can do and you know we are ready for uh, trying to see its usefulness we need to start with installing r right so we can go to the um i think so r is basically i think an output of a cran project i can't recall what that stands for you know it's it's a so cran is an acronym uh so we go to this website we can we would see uh, by default this the latest version of uh, r that is available you know we can download depending on whichever um operating system we are on and you know start from there so that's that that would be our first step installing r now um let's see are there any special instructions here for um, yeah so practically speaking like you know you will if it's a windows system you will get an exe uh if it's a mac system you will get that package file and then you just have to install those so you download those uh, the the software setup uh, depending on whichever your operating system is you download it and then you double click or you know follow the instructions to install on that system um a, a very uh, obvious next step happens to be when you're going to become an r user is to install an r studio which is a software or an ide which is integrated development environment which provides it is similar to eclipse for those who have known java um now what this helps with is uh it gives you uh, it it makes your life a lot more convenient let's put it this way um it pro so in r you just have the console uh, and you can type things out and you will get things um you know you'll get the results out uh, and you will you know do things sequentially and you know maybe iterate over things and uh, just keep doing and keep getting your outputs. Now, when you want to be able to um, do it in a, in a more uh, sophisticated way, that's where our studio an, or an IDE would help. Uh, I think VS Code also uh, can, can handle our, there are some people I've heard who, who use VS Code as their IDE. Um, so it's more or less an, um, you know, personal choice at this point. So, but to install, the, uh, uh, download and install our studio, you need to go to the RStudio website. Um, it's a PVC company and you can go there, go to the download section and install it for, you know, again, whatever system you're on. Um, so it'll, it'll give you, you know, enough instructions to do that, uh, whether it's a Windows, Mac OS and, and all of that. 
And then once that is set up, uh, you would see an IDE like this. Um, it will take you, so the first, you know, the fresh R studio that will always open up for you would be, uh, this is called console. Uh, the right-hand side is your environment pane um, or is it called something else. And then this is your um, uh, files explorer pane. Um, here in, so like I said, I, the first time I think when, when you open it up, it, it goes into the default location, I think where your R is installed or, yeah. So um, that's where it would always start. Uh, now, when you go to the file section, you can create new files. Uh, you can create, um, you can save the scripts and you, what you will see, and actually I can show you one. Uh, I have lots of them open. So, you, you know, this is my R studio on my Mac. Uh, you can click on any of these to, you know, save or create a new file or, projects and all. So these are the sort of next steps that we can talk about. So for example, I have this, you know, dot R script that was created. You can actually click on any of these also to create new documents. And so, so essentially coming back to the basics, this is the edit, uh, editor pane where you can actually write your, you know, more than just one line of code, um, run things and iterate over things. And then when, when you're ready, you actually save it so that you can rerun all your set of instructions. And this is the console, which in this diagram was the bigger section because um, when you start afresh and there is no open window or no open script, this is how you would have, you know, the console would be an expanded version. So this is the sample of your uh, console. You also have terminal and background jobs sections here. Um, And again, here you have environment, you have history. So environment tells you uh, it will have it will contain all the variables that are. I'm on video, just so you know. It'll uh, so every time you run something, you know, in your code, uh, all the objects that created will show up here. And in the history, we'll have all the commands of uh, you know things that you would run. Ouch, sorry. Um, and then connections when you're working with databases. Um, and then this is tutorials, mostly, you know, the R Studio tutorials that are available. Um, close my door, please. The, um, and then in the file section, like I said, so in here, um, we started with you know, the home of your uh, computer, you can click on any of these folder uh, locations and then, you know, um, navigate to where you want to be. Um, then the plot section will have, um, yeah, so for the next is the plot pane, which, uh, you know, you would see populating uh, every time. Hi. Is there a question? So, so yeah, and uh, just uh, what, because I see in your system and it's, it's uh, five, uh because that question? He, here is 225 okay so we are like oh time here. i'm in india i'm in india that's why <laughs> okay and what what is it? it's five uh, 55 pm yeah 50 uh-huh how is that possible so we we, we have more so not, not an uh, entire hour so not a whole our and yeah, with, with India and few other places, okay. there is this time zone thing that you know it's half an hour. How many hour plus half an hour? You know of um, oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know that. Uh, uh, I absolutely believe there was were our uh, okay. That's good to know. Sorry if I interrupt you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. Uh, I, I also wanted mm -hmm. to say I yeah I asked you to 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 go through these things because it's always a bit difficult to you know, uh, say the things that you are aware of uh, and explain to the others. So, and, and I expected, you know, to find uh, those little things that I didn't know. And maybe, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So for me, I, I, I know how to do these things, but it's good to have that uh, on uh, on YouTube, maybe. What do you think? 
Ja. Ja. Thank sure. you. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I was talking about plots pane. So where basically when you start plotting with uh, either ggplot or the base R plotting functions, uh, once you run that code, your plots would automatically open up in the plots pane. Uh, when you have something in there, you can, you know, you get an option to maximize or zoom, uh, zoom onto those um, plots and also export it into some different formats. Then you have packages section, which uh, basically shows you the entire um, set of packages that you have installed on your system. Um, if you want to install something new, you can either click on install, write the name of the package and you know click install, or you could go and do um, install.packages uh, on your console, write the name of the package in quotes, and then that will do the same. Um, you could also update from the pane. It will show you all the packages that you have. You can select them and then you can uh, update those particular packages. Then you have help, um, wherein you can, so any um, function that you're working with and you can't recall uh, what that function is about, or you know, even if you read someone else's code, you know, you look into a function where you don't know what that is about, or sometimes then we know what the function is, but we don't know how many arguments to that would go into it, or how to just you know uh, get any information about that function or any arguments in that function, or maybe to see an example of that function. All of that you can do by typing the name of your function. For example, is dot na. You can type that name. You will see prompts of you know, string matched um, function names here. And then you click on that, you will get the help file for that. Um, a lot of times you would also see something related will show up, right? Um, and uh, yeah, and that's about that. And there's also this another search button here where you can find something within this page. So uh, let's see, for example, false. So it'll just keep highlighting things, you know, whenever it files. So, string falls in here. So that's um, that's helpful sometimes. Um, and that's, so you can also find help by typing uh, question mark and the name of, um, for example, uh, do I need to do deep plan? Let's try. You can, um, you know, write the name in console with the question mark in the beginning, and then it will again show up in the same place. Um, the viewer pane is for um, I think viewing the shiny apps or your or markdown outputs. And presentation pane is again for seeing some of the presentation formats if you work in them. Uh, but that should be all that we cover in our studio basics. Um, all right, so the only shortcomings I found with our studio is that of the starting instrument. Uh, yeah, so our studio, um, you know, as a software, they keep improving it. So you'll keep getting some updates and you have to keep um, sort of um, refreshing or updating your uh, software. Now, um, next section talking about starting up R. Um, you could go ahead and just, you know, or go to your R, um, what do you call just the R software, go ahead and click on it. And when you open it, it will show you something like this, like, an, uh, you know, some um, notification of what version of R it is. It usually has some name associated with, with each release and then copyright information and, you know, all of that. Um, that you, This is something like a standard um, information that you will get every time you open a new instance of R. Uh, also, when you open a new R Studio session, this is what you would see in the console, I believe. Yeah. So in right now, um, I have a version 4.2.1, which was called Funny Looking Kid, which is different from what this one was. Um, yeah, and, and all of that information. I think one interesting part could also be to discuss is that, you know, you have these two buttons here for all of these panes, um, which this one allows you to minimize it. This makes it fit into the default sizes. And then if you were to click on this, this maximizes it. So again, 
the when you maximize it, it changes to reset to your old one. This allows you to minimize it and then reset it to the original one. And all of these panes have that. And you can also change the, you know, this whole, um, this four pane setup into the way you would like. So uh, I, I worked with some people who have, who have their own preferences. So they can, so you can go to view panes. Um, let's see. And then I think, no, it's not this one. There is something that allows you that. Change pain. Nope. I can try global options. Let's see, it doesn't have here. Maybe global options has it. Yeah, pain layout here. So you can, you know, choose which one you want on the left hand side. So this gives you that option of one, two, three, four. These are the four sections that you're looking at. You can rearrange them in however way you like. Even within these, you can you know, choose to keep or not keep some of these options. And uh, yeah, and then when you hit apply, it'll change how your uh, studio looks like. Cool, so I have worked in, you know, in this um, environment where I actually have my console this side and my environment paint this side, just to be able to, you know, see my running code right in front of my eyes while the code is here. When it's not so important to have my, look into my environment variables. But uh, I think that should be all for, for the tidbits point of view for our studio. This is how it looks like in the beginning. Um, yeah, so now actually starting to use R. So uh, I think we when we start working with R, you'll always read that R can act as a basic calculator. So this is the console. I, I think I just briefly touched upon this earlier. So this is actually where a lot of our, you know, our magic is actually happening. So this, when we write a command here, and you know, this is called um, the prompt. I don't know if it has a special name, but I, I think this is prompt. So whatever you write on your prompt, it'll, it is basically running a command in R and then giving you the results. So, uh, you know, you can do one plus two gives you three. And you know this is how you would say a basic calculator. This is how you would expect a basic calculator to do. Uh, you but you could do more than that. Um, yeah, okay. Even square root is a, a calculator function, but you could also do. Um, let's see uh, what else. Can I do beyond? <laughs> I can do everything. Um, Da, 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 da. Maybe let's talk about strings. So I could do So we could, you know, do more things than just uh, using it as a calculator. And we can do, um, we can create a sequence. And yeah, all the good stuff. Um, okay, this is an interesting thing. So if you've noticed, I think this portion, I want to see and come back to this again. Um, there are a few things that I was talking about. So I think I, I just want to read this here because um, this this reminded me of a conversation that I had on another Slack. So um, I, I'll just go through this. Even with the, some, such a simple example, it's important that you understand how to read this extract in this example, what slash typed was 10 plus 20. Um, but I didn't type the you know, the angle, the greater than symbol, that's just our command prompt and isn't part of the actual command. So neither did I type one thirty part. That's what R printed out in response to my command. Secondly, it's important to understand how the output is formatted. Um, obviously the correct answer to the sum of 10 plus 20 is 30 and not surprising as well with that out, but it's also printed out this, which,
Okay. So, okay, this is this portion is interesting. So, I think there, there are a lot more details to this, but what it is saying is, um, you know, even though we just did a very simple calculation here, the two things that he, that the author wants to highlight is that, you know, that arrow key that I earlier mentioned that it's the command prompt of, it's, it's our command prompt. So when when you are when your cursor is on that that's that what that's what shows you that your R console is ready for you to you know type a command type an instruction to perform something and when you get a result and you see okay one comma thirty or whatever you know the thirty is answer in this case but it can be anything in in your operation so uh, in in the base in the most basic sense what this means is the answer to the first question that you asked me is thirty so that's how I we would read it because. Uh, we, we're talking about this one here. So this is, you know, when you're asking a question and this is when you get an answer from R. Um, all right, and then what is this about? Just another thing, now that I've touched these rules. <laughs> okay, so, um, it seems that prompt that we see here, it's it's possible to change it. Um, and this has instructions on how you can do it in your console. You type after this. No, I will show you. Um, yeah, but then generally we use one hash for commenting in R and R scripts. So uh, that's that's not advisable to do that but this is this is sort of doable kind of thing that we can change the prompt um and i've been talking a lot should i pause and see if there are questions okay so i'll keep going uh yeah and i think this is a very important one so i think one of the uh, big um sort of concerns where we get tripped in in you know and it, and it happens for um any anyone beginner to super experienced that uh, you could make typos in your code and then you can keep just looking around as to why something didn't work the way you thought um so for example you know if you were trying to assign something you know, there's a specific way you have to do that. Or in this case, for example, if, if I wanted to write 10 plus 20, uh, you know, because I was expecting an answer of 30 specifically, but I said I, I wrote uh, 10 is equal to 20, right? Plus is plus and equal or in the same key. Um, so what we would end up getting is an error saying, you know, error in 10 is equal to 20. Uh, the, the left hand side has, you know, the assignment is invalid um because our functions in a very rule based way uh, even if, so for example I, I don't know about spss but for any uh, sas users it can another tripping point can be uh, case sensitivity so r is uh, case sensitive meaning um you know um like an x uh, if you're if, let's say you know if you're just uh, for testing purposes we are assigning a variable x so x is equal to 5 right and then capital x is equal to 7 these are two different things so if you are if you've assigned something uh, and you are referring to um a, ver a, a variant of that in in different case uh, for example let's see uh, if i said name is equal to c priyanka samara and right and i tried referring to name right so that uh the only thing that has changed here is the object name is now starting with capital n but uh, the object name with capital n does not exist so you know that's that's what i mean by when i say case sensitive it the object that you can refer to has to be exactly how you assigned it to be so small n a m e is what will give you the the correct answer but if this was sas uh it's um sas is you know sort of is um not ignorant what's the right word um 
it's it's lenient with the cases and you know name or name or you know all those versions will be same uh, will be referring to the same object in in that case um what else so yeah spacing um is uh, some, some something that r is very flexible with so you can add um, 10 sorry 10 plus 20 or you can do as many spaces as you want all of this will give you the right answer uh, so as long as there is you know that operator and then the right um what do you call the the operations operators and operands okay so but there is probably some exception to read about which is citation function but i think i will not talk too much about this okay so when you're doing a function call uh, that's where it that spacing will not work. So when when you write a function name, it has to immediately follow the parenthesis, and um, uh, so any extra spaces within the function, uh, you know, sort of function call or in in place of arguments, that's fine. But between parenthesis and the function name, that's not fine. So it it won't work. It won't be acceptable. Um, and even within the name like the entire name has to be one name without any spaces. Um, okay, this is an interesting one, um, something I've not, you know, sort of read too often about. So uh, a lot of times you would see when you, when you start writing your R code and, you know, there is a lot of nesting or, you know, there is a bunch of things going on within sort of, let's say one, um, one function call or one, one statement. Uh, and I think I, I experience this a lot, so I'm, I'm sure others uh, face it too. So, you know, you will have sometimes, you know, like one bracket opening and then closing, and then within one, you will have further um, things happening. For example, inside a mutate, then you do a if else to create, you know, while creating, trying to create a new variable. Within if else, you're testing maybe two conditions. So you will have like multiple parentheses opening and closing. And you may... I mean, it's, it's very likely for you to uh, sort of get stuck with something. And what happens is so when, when there is not a right match of those parentheses and or maybe curly braces, um, a lot of times R is able to catch it. And it'll what it will do is um, it will, uh, you know, show up in your console as a plus. Uh, so essentially what this indicates is that, you know, um, R is waiting for you to respond. So um, um, most of the time, like, you know, ending it with, you know, adding a parenthesis or a curly bracket would suffice, but not, not necessary, not always, because it would really depend on how that flow of your statement is. Uh, sometimes even, uh, you know, if you have a missing pipe or an extra pipe, can also cause things like this. So you just basically, it just indicates that something in your syntax is not right. You need to go back and just review where all the brackets and pipes are all placed in the correct order. <clears throat> um, so for example, in this case, you know, you started the function call, you've not closed this parenthesis. So that's why it is telling you, you know, that something is missing. Um, So doing some simple calculations, we've talked about this. So you can, you know, do the addition, perform that on console, or you can write it in your script. Similarly, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. Anything that I miss here? So yeah, so power, I think is probably a slightly different one where you use um, the caret operator, which is um, shift six. Um, but otherwise, all are, these are the standard, you know, um, mathematical operators that we can use um, for taking powers. This is the power function, this one. Um, so, yeah, five times, um, five raised to the power four is how you would read this. Um, 
yeah it also you also need to be uh, you know sort of uh, very careful of the order of your calculation so um i have growing up read about board mass where you have brackets um what is o stand for uh then okay i'm missing o but it then um brackets open um division multiplication addition subtraction so that's the sort of order you have to follow but in in r um you know if if you want to sort of not if you want to force us another order, you want to make sure that you put parentheses to for that to happen. So, you know, again, in this example, one plus two times four, um, what it is going to start with would be that boss board mass rule, but probably, you know, different places call it differently. So what it will do is do this. Um, okay, so it did this addition first and then, no, wait. Oh, it did one plus two times four. So what one plus eight is um, what is giving you. This may not exactly be what you're always expecting. So if you put a parenthesis over here, then um, then basically that nine is correct. But if your parenthesis were here, um, it, the answer would be different. So you just have to be mindful of uh, how you wanted to calculate um storing numbers as a variable so we use this as the uh, assignment variable um this uh less than and dash or hyphen um so you know when we are working with now we are starting to sort of understand how our you know calculations work then now in order to be able to save those calculations into a script a lot of times we would save the numbers or um, values in uh, variables or you know in the data frames and things like that so this is how so that's why this assignment operator is very helpful um so if you you know give 350 like the value of 352 or this variable called sales and then refer to this it will you know ultimately so basically this is storing the value 350 and every time you use this unless it is overridden you would be able to access that 350 for any calculation purposes so you can interesting so I, I don't use this too often but i've always done the left side as assignment and the right side is the the value that is assigned but you could apparently also do it reverse order um like this um so yeah that's fun uh then moving on to i don't think i'm going to finish this chapter either doing calculations using variables so Think pretty simple that uh, you could assign it. So earlier we did 10 plus 2, right? Now, if I assign that 10 to x and 20 to y and set x plus y, it would give me the same results. But now we are doing uh, the operation with the variables or with the, uh, yeah, with, with our variables. So, which allows us to, for example, if I save this in a script and I wanted to change x and y, we could do that. Uh, maybe pass these values into a function and whatnot. So um, it, it's just basically just, you know, slowly moving towards how we make things more and more um, sort of dynamic or um, uh, that allow us to, you know, write set of procedures to do and then also allow us to modify things that can change um, in in a way. Right. So, for example, you know, this assignment revenue initially had this value of sales times royalty. Then, for some reason, I want to add five fifty to it, and you know, things will change appropriately um, in in that way, in that order. Um, rules and conventions for naming variables. This is a very interesting topic, um, and actually a very important one. So, uh, let's look at this. Um, I'll probably share this afterwards, but you know, like, um, for, for a long time after working in R, I didn't realize how important like naming your variables was it. And it is very easy to do, you know, X is equal to this and Y is equal to that and X and Y and X plus Y, and then just keep recycling those X and Y variables or sometimes A, B and C, but it's not 
not just not reproducible, but it's just not sustainable because you will end up without realizing so messing up so much that you know for one um, script that you're writing today you you did that then tomorrow you move on to doing something else and then you know eventually something else afterwards but and if you're if you don't close your art studio like my me and then you know your a's and b's and x's and y's will stay in the environment and they can mess up your um you know the values in that project without knowing and that can be very stupid feeling <laughs> It's it's not good. So um, what that means is a couple of things here. So you should restart your art session frequently. Maybe shut it down, like close it off entirely. If, uh, that that's the best. Um, use our projects, and I, I probably it will come in later. But um, if I mean it, using our projects is something that you know, if I someone to ask me one tip that you could give some you know junior coders that I wish I had known earlier. Um, would be that you know start with um, using our projects because it's just so much nicer neater and without much effort it's something that um, it's it's like one of the must use kind of things at one point I was advised very strongly about it and I was so stupid to not follow it uh, until I made a mistake which was uh, non-traceable and then after that is when I moved and there's no looking back. Um, but yeah, so coming back to the naming variables, the most important I think I would say is always name your variables to be very sensible names in the sense that, you know, you, it gives you a, a good idea of what this variable contains, whether it's a name of a data frame or the name of a list or a variable vector, whatever it is. Um, you. Um, I think uh, most sort of preferred, I think, are the, uh, what is it called, a snake case option where, you know, your first, so if it's a combination of a few words, the first word would be all, all small case, and then you'll have a, you can say, no spaces, but title case for every other word. Uh, the other one, I don't know what it is called, but which is the one that I use is, everything should be small letters, and all the words should be separated by underscore. It is. It makes your code very, very readable, and it also makes it easy for you to work with. Because if you're if you're typing through your keyboard, key sorry keyboard, um, when you write three letters and you do a tab, it gives you a bunch of options that start with the same three letters. Um, so you know if you do a tab, uh, you you can do use arrow keys to go up and down to choose that. Then you do a tab to um, select that one. So it it makes your typing and your coding faster. Um, but for the basic rules, um, you variables na variable names can only use uppercase alphabet characters as well as lowercase characters. So you can have you know A to Z in uppercase or lowercase in your uh, uh, variable name. You could also um, use numbers and uh, dots and underscores. Um, so SAL dot E underscore S as a variable name is fine, although it's not um, it's it's not advisable, but it will be very, it, it's not the same as the sales variable that was we talked about earlier. Um, um, then, yeah. Yeah, I uh, have a meeting at 2 p.m. exactly here, <laughs> Sorry. Okay. like in four minutes, but just want to like um, decide what we are going to do for the next session or because I could present the next chapter, but um, the next chapter, uh, as I can see, is descriptive statistics. Mm -hmm. the chapter five and um, do you both agree with that um so we do have so this chapter is, is not finished so probably we should continue this one and then do the additional r concepts if we are interested if you all are interested and i think it's fine to do that um and then we also have chapter one and two why do we want to learn stats and then introduction to research design um again as a group do we want to do that we can do those first and then move to descriptive stats 
or uh, after finishing this introduction to our ses section part two, then move to part three, which is the first chapter there being descriptive stats. Right. Um, the word is this, but well, I don't know what do you think, but I am quite familiar with R. Okay. So at least, at least you think is uh, worth it for us, as, as you say, for the videos for the YouTube yeah, channel. Yeah, so cool. I think I'm fine with that, uh, moving to descriptive stats. Or, I mean, if I had to read, I was also thinking that's that was like the first chapter was too theoretical for me to read. That's that's why I couldn't <laughs> stand too long. <laughs> okay, uh, we could go for chapter one and two then. Yeah, so, no, it's fine. If you want to do first one and two or you want to do five, I'm fine with both. Um, Your call. Raise chapter two. All right. This one, introduction to research design. Let me scan it quickly. That might be nice to discuss about yeah. the, the research uh, design. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, especially because I am not quite familiar with uh, psychology data. Okay. So mm, I think it will be worth it. Uh, but I don't know, do you want to, to finish like this chapter? for additional art concepts for the next meeting, or we can go for chapter one. Um, yeah, yeah, no, I, I mean, uh, so we are fine with that. So I think we can just uh, skip the other chapters and jump to the next session. Right. So do you want me to present the chapter one and two then? Or, or chapter one, I don't know how long is it. Oh uh, yeah, sure, go for it. Right. Cool. Right. And, yeah, another thing is like for the, the data science in R, we had like a GitHub repository. Mm -hmm. Are we going to do the same? What uh, do you think? Yeah, we we can. Yeah, I didn't uh, I didn't get it set up yet. But um, uh, if you if you I mean, so for me, I just these notes uh, for this chapter specifically, I didn't need uh, you know to make too many notes. So I I just covered it from the chapter itself. But if you think you want to make you know like a separate RMD file, uh, and we can we can do that. You know if that's what you will use to present, then we can uh, set up the GitHub repo also, and then we can sort of um, keep uploading our material there. Right. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Yeah, um, that's cool. Could you send me the link for the climate group? <laughs> Yeah, I'll send you an invite. Absolutely. And I'll uh, see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye.